Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. In today's video, we're going to talk about the various ship's crests that the crew of Battleship New Jersey have adopted throughout her career. USS New Jersey is fairly unique among warships in that she has gone into and out of commission several different times, uh, often with entire generations in between commissionings. So her uh, various crews each have their own uh, traditions that are not so much linked to previous ones. So every time this ship was put back in commission, the crew would design a new crest for themselves. And in some cases, they would adopt uh, the previous crest. And uh, so you'll see some design similarities going forward. Um, but also some changes throughout this over time. Ship's crests come about uh, after World War II. By the 1950s, many ships have designed their own crests, and, and uh, sometimes these are painted onto the superstructure. Uh, sometimes they're just on patches or things like that. Nowadays, it's very common to put them on a challenge coin. Um, this tradition probably starts during World War II, uh, especially when different army vehicles and uh, army air force aircraft would have logos painted on their noses or on the chassis of their vehicles and uh, have names assigned to them by their crews. So ships, of course, already have names. Um, but during World War II, and especially in the decade just after World War II, you see many ships adopting crests similarly to the, the nose art on aircraft. Um, just a brief aside, oftentimes crests and nose arts like that were uh, designed by the Walt Disney Corporation. So uh, everybody during World War II was doing their part to help the war effort. And probably nobody had better artists in the country at that point than the Walt Disney Corporation. So part of how they helped with the war effort was by designing these uh, crests for the vessels. And I've seen some uh, of these ships crests designed by the Walt Disney Corporation. They usually come with a like paragraph long write up. We used this feature and that feature in this particular color and blah, 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 because it means X, Y, and Z. Now, I don't have any of that stuff at hand, so we're just going to briefly go through. So this is the World War II era ships crest. Like I was saying earlier, it wasn't really an established tradition yet. Uh, so this was not an officially adopted crest by the crew, but it was designed by them and used somewhat uh, during the World War II era. So that's the closest we have to a World War II era crest for this vessel. Again, it, it uh, sort of predates it. You've got a lion. The lion is holding shells and it has a uh, artillery piece on its back and the American flag there and then the ship's name and hull number. A relatively simple design. And again, I am far from being an art historian, but uh, a lion with guns and American flag seems like it speaks for itself uh, pretty well. I don't feel like I need to do too much interpretation into that. Moving forward, by the 1950s commission, we have an official designated crest. Often associated with these crests is a saying of some sort. So uh, New Jersey's in the 1950s is peace through strength. So we're in the middle of the Cold War. Uh, I don't see this thing showing up too much during the Korean War, so it might be the mid 50s by the time it's adopted. And that tends to fit in more with when these crests are showing up. So we're in the middle of the Cold War, uh, which is very much a peace through strength time period. That's very much the, the culture in the military at the time. Of course, I have the name and the hall number. Um, we see the rope work around the border, which will carry on in all of the subsequent uh, crests for this vessel and are very common in nautical crests. Rope work is a fairly common thing. As built, Battleship New Jersey had 15 miles of rigging and cables um, as part of her mast structure. So rope work, very common on ships. So that's not surprising. Blue and gold. Navy colors, also not surprising. Uh, so continuing with the peace through strength, you have laurels, which are a traditional sign of peace. 
then you have a trident and the ocean. So that is a weapon and uh, a weapon associated with the sea. Of course, this here, and then a globe here. The ship operates all over uh, the earth from the Pacific to the Atlantic and uh, even into the Mediterranean at times. So as one of only a handful of battleships left in the world, she gets around all over the place. And that seems to be something that uh, the crew was cognizant of when they designed this. Moving on from the 50s into the 1960s, we have uh, a new crest designed by that crew. Um, again, USS New Jersey BB-62 at the top. Firepower for freedom is the new motto, and that motto is going to be continued on through the rest of the ship's career. Interestingly, this one features three stars, which may be emblematic of this being the ship's third commissioning, or it might just be how things fit. I'm, I'm not entirely sure why that particular number was chosen. There are two stars on the 1950s badge, but uh, they seem to just be dividing the, the wards. It doesn't seem to be like they're thinking this is the second commissioning. And there are going to be four stars on the next crest, so maybe there's uh, a reason for that. Some things have carried over in modified form. Uh, the primary colors are now blue and white instead of blue and gold, but uh, you see the uh, waves here, which have transformed from the other side. You see the laurels have also made their way over. The ship was reactivated in Philadelphia, so you see the Liberty Bell here. Uh, and the Knight's Head, which is a traditional uh, warrior symbol. Also armor. This is the really the only heavily armored ship in the fleet at this point. Uh, and then, of course, an entire 16-inch gun turret. Uh, or maybe they're going for a gunner's mate uh, shoulder patch emblem. But uh, anyway, guns, armor, a shield, like they're, they're very protection and armor uh, heavy here, which is, again, something very unique to New Jersey at this time period. And then moving on to our 1980s commission, you again see uh, some similar things, but more in line with modern ships, the crest is no longer a circle, it is now an oval shape, which is how it is on all uh, ships. You see firepower for freedom has been retained as the slogan. Uh, you see that there are now four stars instead of uh, three. This is the fourth commission. Again, not sure if they just did that to divide the text or if there was a deliberate thought um, that that was the case. Still have the shield with the 16-inch gun turret in the top. Now instead of the Liberty Bell, we've got cross tomahawks. Ship was reactivated in Long Beach. She, she didn't even come to the East Coast uh, during this 1980s commission. So the, the connection to the Liberty Bell is not there. They have gone back to another traditional American symbol in the uh, eagle. Um, interestingly, the laurels from the last two have been deleted. Um, but the ocean waves have been retained. Finally, now that we've looked at the four crests for Battleship New Jersey BB-62, I have the uh, challenge coin for SSN 796, the new New Jersey, which shows that vessel's crest. Uh, interestingly, it takes the traditional shape, as uh, crests nowadays do, but it adds a devil tail and horns, because their nickname is the devil fish, after the New Jersey devil. Uh, it has the state uh, of New Jersey shaped into it, which inset to that has George Washington crossing the Delaware River, uh, which, of course, the attack on the Hessians at Trenton is a very famous military event in the uh, state of New Jersey. It's got silver and gold dolphins, the dolphins, of course, being the sign of the submariners, silver for enlisted, gold for officers. Uh, it has USS New Jersey, SSN uh, 796, like usual. Uh, this, uh, it also features the battle stars that Battleship New Jersey earned along with the, uh, the various wars that the ship participated in, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, around the uh, border here. It's got the battleship silhouette sailing towards a Virginia-class submarine here. Okay. And it has the motto, Virtute Ignis Pro Libertas, 
which is just Latin for firepower for freedom. But uh, modern crests tended to uh, be Latin words as opposed to uh, a traditional saying. So that uh, is just taking the uh, traditional title and passing it on to the, the more modern way of doing it. So it is very interesting to see which themes the various crew have carried with them over time, and even now uh, to another New Jersey, one generation removed from this one. So uh, we are right now in one of the ship's uh, offices associated with the oral history program. When we interview former crew members, we'll often pull the seal uh, off of the wall to put in the uh, video with them. So if you've watched any of our oral history interviews on the YouTube channel, uh, and there's a playlist of them linked down below, then you'll probably see these pop up in the various videos. And uh, so now we've finally done a video that explains what those all mean. Which one's your favorite? What do you think is the best motto for Battleship New Jersey? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to help the museum out. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our channel. Thanks for watching.